From from our information, basically we know that uh, Dr. Abdul Mahmoud <coughs> is uh, one of the public intellectuals from Egypt, and he is uh, actively involved in uh, politics, especially in uh, Freedom and Justice Party, and he was the, or is still the spokesperson of the particular party. So uh, basically tonight, uh, this evening, we will have will be having a discussion on uh, the Muslim world, the condition, the recent uh, situation around the globe. And uh, it is our pleasure to have you, uh, Doctor. And I think without further ado, uh, I give uh, the, the platform and the stage to you. Thank you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ذات دكتور صديق جزاك الله خيرا may Allah reward you with the best of everything in this life and in the hereafter may Allah bless your health your wealth and your family for hosting us in this uh, in your home it makes me happy as a Muslim to come to my Muslim brother from Malaysia and meet with you all thank you all for coming leaving your families leaving your other things to do so that we as Muslims discuss the situation of the Muslim Ummah because the Ummah Al-Mu'minu Lul-Mu'mini Kalbunyan the mu'min to another mu'min is like a wall. They empower one another. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-mu'minu lil-mu'mini kal-yadan taghsilu ihdahum al-ukhra. A mu'min to another mu'min is like two hands. Each one washes the other one. And that is very important. The unique characteristic of the ummah Ummatul Islam is based on Kalimatul Tawheedi wa Tawheedul Kalima on the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the unity of the Ummah that's beautiful characteristic of this Ummah but I would like in few minutes I don't want to talk a lot because I would like to make this as a discussion and please do not hesitate to ask any question. And I always say that you have the right to ask. And I have the right not to answer. <laughs> Is this a good deal? Yes. Then what will you do then? Would you like to tell them what they should be doing? <laughs> no, <you tell> them. <laughs> because first time I said to Brother Arfan, he said, I'm going to ask you tough questions for last night's program. I said, you have the right to ask. But I have the right not to answer. And you know what did he say to me? He said, but I still have the right to ask again. <laughs> so let us, inshallah, ask. All of us can learn from, from, from one another. Now, I have a question that I am puzzled with for more than 20 years. I have two ayat from the Quran al Karim. They're giving me hard time. Two verses from the Quran. The first one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes al ummah, this ummah, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat limin linnas. I get puzzled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects this ummah to be the best ummah produced for mankind. But when you look at the ummah now, it is not the best. Why Ustaz Anwar is in jail? Why? Why Dr. Morsi is in jail? Why? As a Muslim, you need to ask yourself, why 
the majority, if not all Muslim countries, but most Muslim countries have jails. And they're putting so many people in jail. Why? Is this really the best Ummah or not? That's one question. In Egypt, in the past two years, the regime in Egypt built about 15 more jails. It did not build 15 universities, <laughs> or 15 factories, or 15 hospitals, because the resistance is very strong in Egypt. And we will talk about this when you ask a question, inshallah. So this is the first ayah, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. The second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the ummah again. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَاءً لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءً عَلَى النَّاسِ Allah describes the ummah. You've come to be a middle ummah, a wasati ummah, a moderate ummah, a just ummah. Why, ya Allah? So that you become a witness to mankind. Do you think that Muslims are witness to mankind or mankind is witnessing against us? You know the Human Rights Watch. You read the report, it's majority of it is about Muslims being tortured in jails by their own governments. Very difficult to find governments in the Muslim world that are not corrupt. Very difficult. Very difficult that to find uh, fairness, justice, real democracy, real the will of the people. Very difficult. We have to ask a question. What went wrong? And once we agree on a roadmap, we need to start working on it and fix the problem. Because Allah will ask us, what have you done? Now, alhamdulillah, that I can travel from all over the world and come to you here, enjoy your meal, and meet with you. We really have to be doing something for the ummah. The Ummah is an ache. In Egypt now, 50,000 promising Muslims like you are in jail now. We have a prison by the name of a Scorpion prison. The leaders of Muslims are in solitary confinement. They cannot even get medication. You may know someone by Dr. Isam al Iryan. You might have heard of his name. Do you know that he is so sick he cannot get the medication inside, inside the prison? They're prisoning him but not even giving him medication. Why has the Ummah reached and the one imprisoning him claims to be a Muslim and prays five times a day? What's going on? What's wrong with this Ummah? This Ummah with people like you will be able to make a change. The world is still waiting for you. You can do it, inshallah. If you get united, if you work with other Muslims, you will be able to produce a better alternative. But then some of you will say, but what is your answer to this, to this question? What went wrong in the Muslim Ummah? I will summarize it in five points, and then I will stop. And please ask all your questions. I think, I always ask, why did Sayyiduna Bilal accept Islam? Why? Sayyiduna Bilal did not pray five times a day. Sayyiduna Bilal did not fast Ramadan in the early days of Mecca. What happened? Why did Sayyiduna Bilal accept Islam? It is because the freedom Islam provided to him. He felt he is a real human being. And Sayyiduna Bilal would be put in the desert of Arabia. They would bring a stone and put it on his chest. What did he say? He said, Ahadun, Ahad. The man was not fearful. So the first thing, my brothers, and my sisters, we have to control fear. Because we're Muslims, we should, know, we should fear no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The problem 
is many of us are fearful from many of us. Many of us are fearful from speaking truth to power. Many of us are fearful to say what is right. That is number one, is fear. The Ummah needs to get rid of fear and come back to Tawheed. Real Tawheed means no fear from any human being. Real Tawheed. My brothers, I'm speaking not about individual Tawheed, I'm speaking about popular Tawheed, the Ummah Tawheed. Sayyiduna Bilal Tawheed, Ahadun Ahad, never accepted. They said, we're going to kill you. Kill me. I will never go your way. I will remain as a Muslim because I believe that is right. And even if people die, where are you going? You're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should not be fearful of anything or anyone. That's number one. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, you remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the women from one big tribe, she stole something. And then people said, oh, but she's from a rich family. We cannot punish that person. Let us go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and ask him to let it go. She's a rich woman. She's from a rich family. And you remember what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, wallahi, by Allah, if Fatima bint Muhammad, if Muh Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad does this, she will be punished. It is justice, my brothers and my sisters. Number two is lack of justice in the ummah. Lack of justice in how we bring up our children. Lack of justice in the way we deal with one another. Look at our business community. You'll find Muslims have difficulty dealing with Muslims. Why? Because they're not just to one another. And I'm speaking about generally. So fear, we need to get rid of fear. We need to focus on justice. The third one, we need to focus on freedom. Help your children, help your students, help your neighbors to be free. Free from fear, free from want, free from oppression. Free, you have to be able to speak your mind as a Muslim. As a Muslim, you have to think freely and you have to think critically. If we can do this, my brothers and my sister will be moving, solving the problem that I raised at the very beginning. We'll be answering the question, what went wrong so that we fix it. A fourth, inclusivity. We have to be able to be inclusive. Your message is a message of mercy, not to Muslims, not even to human beings, not even to all the people on the face of the earth. It's to everything. It's even to trees, to animals, to the fish, to the environment. Your message is a message, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ When you look at Muslim communities, Muslim countries, you see they are not rahma. They are adab. They are torture. Not only to animals, but they talk. A, a person will go to hellfire because of imprisoning a cat. So how about those who imprison thousands of Muslims? And Muslims accept it. And Muslim, Muslims go about it as if nothing is happening. This is where we make a mistake. When you see something wrong, say something. Allah will ask you. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us, As-sakitu anil haqq, shaytanun akhras. If someone is not telling the truth, that person is a duff, is a dumb, or a deaf devil. Not just a regular devil, a dumb devil. That's the worst description of a human being. So my brothers and my sisters, inclusivity. We need to include anyone, any Muslim in our da'wah, 
and then any human being in our rahma. Don't tell me they're Christians, they're Jews, they're Chinese, they're this, they're that. They're human beings, they deserve our rahma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the rahma. We cannot take it from them. Allah describes, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah has honored mankind. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us, كُلُّكُمْ لِآدَمْ وَآدَمُ مِنْ تُرَابِ You all belong to Adam. So we would like to show the world, the world, the whole world, that Islam is a message of mercy. You know why I stand against terrorism? Because it is against the essence of Islam. It's against the essence of Islam. Islam is not about killing any human being. Islam is not about killing animals. Islam is not about destroying nature, let alone uh, to, to kill other human beings and claim that this is Islam. That's wrong. That has, that you people and other Muslims have to be able uh, to fix uh, that particular problem. I will conclude by saying this. Muslims need to stop talking about theories. What I spoke so far is fear. To be free from fear, you work for justice, you work for freedom, you work for inclusivity. The last one, we need to think of how can we establish an economic system that can create jobs and that can share wealth. In the Muslim world, there are few who has it all. And there are majority who don't have. In Egypt, I'm talking about Egypt. I don't want to get into any country's politics, but I'm talking about Egypt. Egypt has two to five percent of the population controls more than 85 percent of the resources. That is not right. And those five percent are served by 15 percent. And 5 plus 15 is 20. Those 20 are controlling the 80. That's wrong. And those 5% are, in Egypt, the military generals, the police, the judiciary. Those are very corrupt. You know, in one session, one judiciary session, the judges, because they're very much politicized in Egypt, in one session that took less than an hour, the judge sentenced 550 Muslims to death. Can you believe that? Can you call this judge as a, a Muslim? You kill 500 in less than an hour. There is a serious problem, my brother. So the, the military, do you know the military in Egypt, the corrupt leaders, not necessarily every soldier, but I'm talking about the corrupt leadership. They killed us in a place called Rabaa. You know Rabaa, all of you. In Rabaa, Rabaa is a square in front of Masjid Rabi al Adawiya. We were standing there protesting oppression. My brothers and my sisters, standing against oppression is the highest level of worship, the highest level of ibadah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that al-shuhada Hamza, not only Hamza, and a person who stood against a tyrant leader, and that person came to sacrifice. To sacrifice your life for justice, this is the highest level. Justice. So the military, there were hundreds of thousands of people the military got into the area. It killed us alive. It burned my brothers and my sisters and children and all. It burned them alive. The Rabaa massacre is considered by Human Rights Watch as the worst massacre, worst massacre committed in recent history to peaceful protesters. And that's why the leaders in Egypt now are wanted for crimes against humanity. How can we do this? You can help. Others can help. 
We need any time a crime like this happen to any human being. I'm not saying only to Muslims. You have to be the champions of freedom, the champions of justice, the champions of equality, the champions of fairness. It is too late now, my brothers and my sisters, to be focusing on your own personality, on your selfish religiosity. Islam has, Muslims have to open up and embrace the whole world. Muslims have to be working for justice, for humanity, for fairness. It is time now. That's why only then we will be able to go back to the khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes this ummah with an amazing description. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches the ummah عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ فَإِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٌ I wonder about the affair of the mu'min. All his affair is good. Ya akhi, ya ukhti. Whatever happens to us, we need to accept it with goodness. That's why when I was teaching in Egypt, uh, by the way, uh, by the way, uh, I got my undergraduate degree in English literature. And then I got my master's degree in English literature. And I read all of Shakespeare. I read George Bernard Shaw. I read most of the literature that I was able to read, both in America and in Egypt. And I was teaching an Egypt English literature. But I was teaching it, I decided to change the way English literature is being taught. That is not a secret to share with you. But I didn't tell the people in Egypt that this is how I'm going to teach English literature. Because most likely they would have arrested me. I am for English literature and all other literature. But to be studied from the center, and your center is your Islamic understanding to the world. That is the difference. You have to liberate your mind from being colonized. And then you can read it with an open mind so that you can criticize it based on that criteria. And alhamdulillah, I was able to do uh, alhamdulillah. And I, my students, I used to love all my students. And I created very social bond with the students. That's why when later came to run for election, it was my students who helped me for my campaign and gave me more than 65% of the votes. For the first time I ran. And subhanallah, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you as much as you can give to the world. As much as you have good intention, you have good, and then you move on into the world, Allah will reward you. Then I went to the United States uh, in 85, and I got my master's and my PhD. I went back to teaching, and I was doing great teaching, but the security people did not like my teaching. So they really wanted to arrest me. And then I got a warning that watch out what you say in your lectures are being recorded, and they are going to build a case against you. Uh, just to make the long story short, they started making it difficult for me to travel around the country and to travel outside of the country. At that time, I was fed up with the system, and I had to leave uh, to America uh, to teach there. And then when the revolution took place, uh, I was back first one uh, to participate in the revolution and to make sure that we will be able to uh, make the changes we wanted. That's why I ran for the uh, parliament and alhamdulillah I won the seat and I decided to work on two things. Foreign relations, because I personally believe that the relationship between the Muslim world and the West has to come to an end. We cannot keep killing one another. Europe is fearful of Islam. Europe needs to get rid of this complex of fear and needs to get rid of this superiority complex. Muslims, on the other side, need also to get rid of this complex of fear and to get rid of the complex, the uh, inferiority complex. 
if we can do this, we will be able to build better relations between the Muslim world uh, and Europe and the United States. And then the other committee I served on is tourism committee. Uh, because I wanted to make tourism flourish in my home uh, country. I wanted tourists to come so that we can speak with them, tell them who we are, what we stand for, and they tell us their story, their human journey. It's very important to look at the good humanity in each and every one. I am sorry if I took longer than expected. Uh, I will stop here. And please don't hesitate to ask any question or share uh, your comments. I will stop.